Hello, it's Alison from Virtually. I thought today I would talk through how to set up an Eventbrite uh, account for the first time and a few things to think about when you're organising an event, um, especially online. I know a lot of us now are creating more events online, but Eventbrite have made it actually very easy for you to do so. And as I'm doing my own very first webinar uh, on the 17th of June, I thought, well, I'll talk through the process of how I set that up and hope that that's useful for other people who have something similar. So when you log into Eventbrite, it will ask you for your email address, name and business name, and then prompt you to make an account. And there are just a few things you need to have ready before you set up your account. First of all, you need your logo. Um, a little bit of description about yourself that you can get from your Facebook page or your website, wherever the best description is. Your bank account details, so either you enter uh, a bank a bank card or you can link Eventbrite to your PayPal if it's a paid event. And any other sort of logos and material that you maybe want to put up for your actual event. Canva is a very good tool to use to create an Eventbrite image because it actually will let you, um, I think it lets you create uh, an image with the right Eventbrite custom dimensions or you can look it up probably in Eventbrite as well. So just to start off with, I'm just going to talk through the different things. So when you create a new event, it will let you do this. So I'm just going to show you what it looks like at the very start in that you press create, create event, it can say continue with the, the details. So you put in your title, the type, the category, um, any keywords that you have and your organizer. And then if it's an online event, you'll see here, it says you put in the venue, you put in the online event or to be announced if you haven't quite decided. And then the single date or recurring date. So that's pretty simple. So I'm just gonna show you how that looks in my own. So as you see here, I called mine pitfalls to avoid when organizing an online challenge, five or seven, 21 days. I clicked for the, the type seminar or talk, and then for the category of people that I want to sort of target, it's business and professional. And for the keywords I put in business and solopreneur, but you can put in um, up to 10, it says there. And then you, so you have your, your date and your time, that's fine. And then when you get into the details part, um, they ask you again to put the summary in and then you just need the description of what you want to, to have in it. Um, I was told it's always good to, you know, make it as simple for people as possible to read, have your bullet points of what you're going to cover, when it's going to be, why you're the expert in this field, you know, why, why should you listen to me? And then you can have your own image of you, your event, whatever it happens to be. And you can add there, it's very good, you can add as many images as you want, you can add a video, you can add text, you know, everything is possible there. And then what Eventbrite have done, especially since the coronavirus pandemic, is they have created another page called online event page. And this is a sort of a sub page where again, you put your title, then you need to put in your Zoom link, however it is that you're going to present your, um, your webinar, seminar, um, you know, it, whatever it happens to be. So you need to set that up in advance as well. And then all you do is simply, is you save that and you have the image. And I just used the image that I had for the first one as well. For the tickets, um, you can set up as many ticket types as you want. I have here the general admission, um, which is nine pounds. And then I have an, another category, which is the general admission to the Zoom um, to the event via Zoom, plus the slides and a bonus checklist afterwards. And just to show you the, the price for that, um, just to be wary when you're setting it up. Um, I'm just gonna call this general admission actually, because I think that's better. Um, you can set here the quantity, the max that you want to have. Now, obviously if it's online, well, if you have, I have a paid version of Zoom up to hundred people, I think. So I want to keep it less than a hundred. And when you set up the, the ticket details here, you'll see that you have the price um, or you can include 
the Eventbrite fees and charge those to the person who's buying tickets. So if I just see here, let me see, view the details. So the ticket price is 920. Um, Eventbrite here take one pound thirty one there, and so you can add that on to the person who you know add that as a charge to the person who buys tickets or not. And if you don't want to do it, you say absorb the fees. You tick that absorb the fees, and then you'll see it brings back down. And then you really you're you're taking the hit with the, the, the ticket price, and that really is up to you. It depends how many tickets you're selling, how big your event is, and the same for this. Not the same for that one. So I'll just save that. And then we'll go on down and for the order options, I'll just move this little thing here. Just make sure that you put in whoops, order options, that you put in any confirmation email, that you confirmation message. So this is when people order, they then get a message from me. Many thanks for registering for this online event. You will receive automatic email reminders before it begins. And then I have my own email address in there. And again, that, that comes from above. And you can also change the event type, um, the, like, the language of your ticketed event or the registration to whatever you want. And for, we just keep going down here. Um, you can also send up a, a wait list if you want to. And afterwards, when you have the, you know, when everybody has purchased their tickets, um, you can sort of, you can print out an attendee list. Um, and you know you can set that to what's going to be as well. You know, surname is it the first name, is the ticket type, what is it you want to do, and download it as a PDF. The really good thing about Eventbrite is that it links with lots of other tools, so you can link it um, via Zapier with your Mailchimp Convert Kit. They they link with a lot of mail marketing platforms. So as soon as you have everyone linked in here or purchased your tickets, at the very end you can actually integrate Eventbrite. So the list goes straight into your MailChimp account and say, for example, for this event, on the 17th of June, it's going to happen. I then um, have add a tag on that that says webinar, online challenge, 17th of June, whatever I want to add the tag. And that means for future events, uh, that if you have a, a future similar event, that then you can go into your MailChimp convert kit whatever you have and actually send out a targeted email just to those people who have signed up. who are, participated in the webinar that you had or the online event, whatever it happens to be, um, which is a really, really good way of um, targeting, you know, future clients because, you know, they always say that your best clients actually come from, from existing ones. So that's very good. And the other thing I would just say as well about discount codes and things like that. So if I can just find it here, they have discount and access codes. So say that maybe you're part of a networking group and you want to give them a special discount code. I, for example, did a presentation recently to the Mums at Work Network here in Northern Ireland and I promised that I would give them the discount code. And so what you do is then you create, you can create as many codes as you want as well. You create a code and it asks you for this event only or for multiple events and you have different um, different options there. So it's a code, you can set a code that you email or, you know, with everybody and say, this is the code. Um, and what I did actually was, I copied the link, sorry, when I had this set up. Um, it says here, you have a, a shareable link. So I shared that link, it'll just come up like this. I shared that link with inside that group and then that, they got the discount. So that's a really useful thing to do. And, you know, especially if, you've got, if you're in different groups, you want specific people, or even if you're organizing an online event and actually you have the speakers, you want to add the speakers to your registration list and make sure that they're in for free. That's a good way to do it as well, that you set up a special code, especially for them. And then for the, the add to Facebook here, just to show you that as well, you can link your Facebook page. Um, you can link your Facebook page with Eventbrite, but just a word of wording that I didn't quite understand the other day because it did pop up. So I linked mine to Facebook and it, it pops up with a message when you do that and it creates the image, it creates the event on your Facebook page. You just might have to rejig slightly the image, but all the rest of the text is pulled through as an event. And so it makes it really easy for people if they come across the event, your event on your Facebook page, to, like to book it within seconds, it's really good that way. But Eventbrite 
if you do that, if people purchase through Facebook in a way, you know, indirectly, they Eventbrite very clearly state that they should not be future sent future sort of email marketing emails unless you have told them in advance you will receive an email from my mail marketing platform because they haven't opted in in a way so that's just something um something to be mindful of as well and i'm just going to think if there's anything else that you need to think about they also have um tracking links as well so you can set up um they have here they have different um they have different tracking links so maybe you work alongside someone and you give them a, an affiliate sort of an affiliate link you know you might have three or four people that you work closely with and maybe you can give them to permit a commission for helping you to sell your event and in that case it lets you create up that create this code and you can share that way as well so as you can see it does a lot it does a lot and for the manage the attendees um i think it's really good when it comes to the event that you know i don't have a guest list yet but um that you can manage your attendees really well another thing to say with your attendees as well it's also very easy to refund people directly from bright so you know you just never know what happens but um I know that during the lockdown there was a lot of people who had to cancel events and Eventbrite actually made them very easy for them and sort of cut off, cut the fees as well if you had to refund because of the, the, the lockdown. But you can refund people directly from Eventbrite as well, um, which is really, really handy. So those are just some of the tips that I have today. Obviously, if you have any questions, give me a shout and I'll, I'll create a little checklist as well of things just to think about when you're creating your event. But when you do, so when you've created everything, it then asks you to publish and go live and this is what you view so when you view it then you have the link like this that you can share everywhere and just to say as well sorry that you'll see in mine here you've got the organizer profile so that's very important to set up at the start as well and it'll prompt you to do that but your organizer profile if you're looking for it it's down here under management and in there you put in your image your name and a little blurb about yourself and then you can put in your um, website, Facebook, whatever it happens to be, a couple of different links there. And that, that organizer profile will appear on all of your events as well, which is really good. So I put in there Facebook, the Twitter, and you can customize your colors. So I think that's really handy as well. And if you have, um, the good thing about Eventbrite as well is that if you have several different events, so I just have the one, but if you have de several different events, people, when they look at your event, will see all the other events that you have lined up as well. So as I said, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. Okay.